Welcome to the Better Business, Better Life podcast. Terry DuPont is the founder of DuPont Advisory Group, a group dedicated to providing comprehensive services to successful business owners, medical, and other professionals. Terry has top of the table status in the prestigious international million dollar round table, placing him among the top one tenth of 1% of all professional financial advisors in the world. Terry's philosophy is, I learned that I grow and prosper more by focusing on the success of others rather than fretting over my own. Terry is a certified financial professional with the Institute of Financial Wellness, an advisor for the power of zero taxes in retirement, chartered retirement plans specialist, certified wealth preservation planner, and certified philanthropic developer. On the podcast, Terry brings together experts in their field who have succeeded in building their business to share their secrets with you. And now, here's your host, Terry DuPont. Welcome, everyone, uh, to this week's episode of Better Business, Better Life, Building on Your Success. And I'm Terry DuPont, your host. And today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are privileged to be visiting with John Freilich, who's one of the elite auctioneers in this country. He owns a, a, his own firm. Uh, it's called uh, JF Marketing Accelerated Auction Strategies. And so, John, welcome to the show. We're honored to have you. Um, so do you mind if I ask you a few questions so we can get to know? No, you? Terry, that'd be great. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, can you tell me a little about a little bit about uh, you and what got you started in this particular career? Sure. I had my own company for years and years and did very well and and uh, at a point in my life got bored with it. And at one point I was visiting my sister in Arizona, who's an artist and she was having an art show. And she came to me and she said, Johnny, we're not selling any art. What are we gonna do? And it was, a, it was in a holiday in lobby, whatever. And I said, well, why don't we have an auction and, and get the excitement level going? I had never done an auction. I did not know what an auctioneer was. I had never attended an auction. I just knew they talked fast. And so she picked out a couple of pieces of art off the wall. I went halfway up the balcony steps and said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have an auction. And I had so much fun doing that. And we did spark interest in the art and we sold a couple of pieces. And then the art show took off and more pieces were sold. Fast forward 15 or 20 years. And I, I had an option, not an option, but I had a, I came to a crossroads in my career and I said, what am I going to do? And I, I read an article about auctioneers and I thought, you know, everyone ever, always tells me you should do something with your voice, John. You have such an incredible voice. You, I thought, well, I have, I'm got a great radio face. Maybe I could do something with my voice. And so I studied to become an auctioneer. It took over a year when you talk about being an apprentice and everything else, passed saw all the tests. And then I became an auctioneer and, and now I do it full time and I absolutely love it. And I bet your sister is grateful as well. <laughs> we <laughs> laugh about it a lot during the year when we talk. Okay. So uh, since you started uh, this in this career, what do you think, uh, what would you think uh, would be the biggest challenge that you faced? Getting people to understand that auctions have been around since the beginning of time. In the Bible, it talks about how the soldiers drew lots at the foot of the cross for Jesus's clothing. And that was one of the very first forms of auction, to be honest. And everything through history up until, gosh, the 20th century was almost always sold at auction. And now today we have kind of a resurgence as people are turning back to auctions as a way to quickly and transparently market their assets, whether they're personal property, real estate, boats, cars, you name it. And they found that through the use of the auction technology and the platform we have today, they can convert those assets into cash quickly, transparently, and most importantly, they know they're getting the top dollar for their assets. When I talk to realtors, 
I, I asked them, do you ever get multiple offers on your homes? And based on the state of the industry in the last two years, it's always, oh yeah, we, we know when we see a property that's a nice one, it's gonna get multiple offers. And my response is, why wouldn't you auction that property? If you simply ask the audience for the your best and highest offer, and we're gonna sit down with the seller and look at all the offers, and then decide which one's the best for our needs, how do you know the guy who is in second place wouldn't have upped his offer if he knew he was shy of winning the offer? And okay. they don't. A traditional real estate agent has no idea how to manage that process properly because they're never taught. They're just, they're told, get your multiple offers, look at which one's the best. But in an auction, we stand in front of a crowd or online and those people can stare each other down. My wallet's fatter than your wallet and, and my wife wants this house and I'm not gonna disappoint her. So no matter what you bid, I'm going to bid more. And in that scenario, the winner is always the seller who got more than what they thought they should get or wanted to get. Mm -hmm. And so it's a win-win for everybody because the guy whose wife wants the house gets to buy the house. But again, if there's multiple bidders, the high bid will be fair market value. Right. I get you. I understand that. Um, and do you find that uh, you're, you're getting um, uh, business for people who are going to sell their home that would typically use uh, uh, the traditional real estate agent? And now they decide to au auction off their home? Absolutely. We see it all the time. We see listings that are getting a little stale or we find sellers who are in a particular situation where they need to sell. They need to know what day they're going to sell their home. And that's one of the benefits of using the, the, act, the auction method of marketing. If you and I were to sign a contract today, I could give you a date four to five weeks from now. And on that day, we are going to sell your house for fair market value at probably the best money you're ever going to get for that house. And you can start planning on the rest of your life and not sitting there wondering, gee whiz, we've had four open houses and the interest is dwindling and, and I'm, I have to lower the price again. And so these people are actually looking at auction and they're seeing what's happening around the country. And we're getting auctions all over the place. Awesome, that's awesome, John. Um, you, like I, 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 I think I mentioned that, you know, it seems like you take a different approach to everything. So how did you become uh, such an expert in this? It's like anything else, time and study, plain and simple. In 2012, I, I became a licensed auctioneer in 2010. I became a realtor in 2011. In 2012, I realized that my, my love, my passion was in selling real estate at auction. And so I attended the Certified Auctioneer Institute in Bloomington, Indiana at Indiana University. It's a three-year program that is taught by some of the world's best auctioneers. And they come in for one week each year over a course of three years and teach a class of 50 auctioneers how to run an auction business, how to run different kinds of auctions, how to market your auction firm and market your individual auctions. Everything and anything you need to know about an auction is taught during these week-long classes over a three-year period. At the end of the third year, they have a, a competition among auctioneers within a particular class, and four world-class auctioneers are the judges. We're talking the, the CEO of an auction company that does $20, billion or $20 million a year in auction sales or commercial real estate or whatever. Huge players in the auction business are the judges, and they give one award after three years. It's called the Rose Award, named after David Rose, who died, unfortunately, of cancer during his second year at CAI. So they renamed this award the Rose Award. And in 2015, I won the Rose Award in my auction class. Awesome. Basically, I graduated first in my class after three years of study. From there, I went on to continue my education in real estate. The National Auctioneer Association, which sponsors the CAI program, also sponsors a whole bunch of training programs. One of them is called the Accredited Auctioneer of Real Estate. 
It's a three day program for 24 hours of training taught by the president of the Ohio Auction School, Mike Brandley, and Manson Slick, who's the CEO of the largest real estate auction company in Canada. Those two partner together to teach three days of in-depth, deep dive, how to sell real estate at auction and be a champion at it. When you look at, at the, the alphabet soup after my name, there are 60,000 auctioneers in America. About 800 of them are practicing CAI graduates. And of those CAI graduates, there's only about 350 CAI graduates that also have the accredited auctioneer of real estate. So as far as training goes, I'm in the top one half of 1% of all trained, skilled, professional auctioneers in America. That's what separates JF Marketing from the rest of the pack. That's that's awesome, John. Um, that's a lot, a lot of work too. A lot of work, I'm assuming. And, it uh, is a lot of work, but the, the the network of auctioneers that I've met and worked with over the years has been phenomenal. I I can't give enough credit to the National Auctioneer Association, the Ohio Auctioneer Association, of which I'm a member of both, and and the networking opportunities and the training opportunities that they give. So my in in summary, my advice to anybody looking for an auctioneer is look for a professional trained auctioneer who's a member of your state or National Auction Association, and you will be getting a qualified, competent, uh, professional auctioneer that will look out for your best interest. Excellent, John. I, I You answered one of my other questions, too. And I'm in Indiana, and so it just goes to show you, there's more than corn in Indiana. Yeah. And soybeans, too. Yeah, soybeans, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me ask you if I could. Um, what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Oh boy. It probably wouldn't have changed my mind, but the thing that I have grown to appreciate more than anything about the auction industry is that the people think, oh, you're an auctioneer, you talk fast. And that's all they equate it to. But that's 2% of the auction process. 98% of the auction process is dealing with clients, working with clients, promoting the auctions, working with different vendors, all the work that goes into it. And if it's an on-site auction, you, you've got to you know, haul everything either out of the house or in the house and set it up and schedule the auction. The auctioneers that I've met, and, I, and I'm sure this goes from coast to coast, are without a doubt, some of the hardest working people I have ever met in my life. And they are solid, true, upstanding, wonderful people that really are in this to help other people. And, and I guess if I, if I lean on that or lean into that, it's probably one of the reasons why I really wanted to become an auctioneer and enjoy the auctioneer industry so, so much as I get the chance to help people every single day. That's awesome. Uh, we have a similar philosophy. So um, that's great. Um, John, what is something that you might share with all of your clients? In what regard? Uh, advice or suggestions? I tell this to every single auction client I have, 48 hours before the auction ends, they are on pins and needles, they are nervous, they're saying, we don't have many bids what's going on why is this not you know generating more interest and i see all the behind the curtains that are going on and my single piece of advice to every single client i have and i even had to tell this to myself because i felt those exact same things when we auctioned off the house i grew up in my mother passed five years ago and we auctioned off the house i grew up in and I had to keep reminding myself, as I remind my clients, trust the auction process. It works. That's good. That's really good, John. Um, and, and you talked about something uh, earlier, and I'm just going to revisit it real quick, just so 
we re reiterate it with our with our guest or our, our audience. And that is, how do you know, how does a buyer or a seller know that uh, their auctioneer is legit? Yeah, that goes back to doing a little bit of research. And most of the good auctioneers that I know have a presence on Facebook. They have a presence in LinkedIn. They have a presence in Instagram. And they have their own website where you can go and see past auctions. You can see current auctions. And it never hurts to give a call to the association at your state level and say, you know, is this member, is this auctioneer a member of your state organization? And and what is what's their record? You know, do they have any judgments against them or are they highly regarded? Uh, have they been a board member? Have they been an officer? in the state organization? Are they leaders in their community? Are they involved? With social media today, it's so easy to get a really, really good look at someone that you're trying to hire. And I highly recommend that you spend, if you're gonna spend the time to hire an auctioneer, spend one hour doing a deep dive yourself through all the social media platforms we have, and you'll get a very, very good flavor for the people that you wanna work with. Okay. This this next question kind of dovetails with that, um, uh, fortunately. <laughs> um, explain how technology changed has changed your industry and how you kept up with the change. Wow. <laughs> what a timely question. And I'll 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 fill you in. The Please. the way that we stay up on our industry is is being involved in the state and the national level with organizations as well as in your own community. I talked about my CAI background, three years of training, my AARE training, which was three days of in-depth training. I am a member of the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing, where we focus on selling luxury real estate at auction, and it's a booming marketplace. But I'm involved as a member of the Institute of Luxury Home Marketing. I am also a member of the Real Agents of Change, and you can look in my background and see right up here, the Real Agents of Change. This is an organization of realtors. I am a realtor as well as an auctioneer, and that gives me the license to be able to sell real estate at auction. But Real Agents of Change work with the nonprofit community and the, the community foundation uh, mm. groups in order to have the conversation that real estate can be donated in a clean, clear, transparent way to the benefit of not only the donor, but of the person receiving the donation, the charity receiving the donation. 97% of charities today, of nonprofits today, do not re take real estate as a donation because once you get that real estate, what do you do with it? What if you have to fix it up? What if you have to clean it up? How do you market it? How do you find an audience? Where do you find a realtor? They don't do that. They feed you know, homeless people. They go out and help mothers who are running away from a bad home situation and trying to protect their children. All of these nonprofits and community foundations need a platform and that's what Real Agents of Change does. We provide a 501c3 so that the donor in donating an, an appraised property, and currently the average real estate donation in America is $550,000. That's a lot of cookies and brownies at a bake sale, you know? Yeah. And so we facilitate that where a donor can donate it to the 501c3 that we work with, get a full write-off for the appraised value of the property, then our group will fix the property, we'll pretty the property up, we'll paint it a little bit, we'll market it. And then as an example, somebody donates a $500,000 property. They say, John, I want $100,000 back to me. And here are the four charities that I want each to receive $100,000. Well, no single charity or nonprofit is gonna do that for them, but our group will. We'll take possession of the property, we'll give the donor a write-off, we'll market the property, sell the property, and then divide the donation exactly how the donor uh, would like it to be distributed. And we do that in a clean, transparent way. It's a beautiful way for people to do that. Now, to get back more specifically to your point, how do I stay on top of the industry? 
if people haven't heard by now, artificial intelligence is skillet hot. You could fry an egg on the skillet that's promoting artificial intelligence right now. And, and I just I just talked, I, I just showed my wife how to use it the other day and it blew her away. <laughs> Maybe so, you can teach me how to use it. <laughs> I'm sorry? Maybe you can teach me sometime how to use it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we um, Here's an example. My wife came to me and she needed to write a paragraph for work and it was required to be written in the third person. I said, email me what you wrote. She emailed it to me. I uploaded it into chat GPT. And I said, rewrite this in a third party, uh, correct any grammatical errors, and then go ahead and, and clean it up a little bit. In 10 seconds, it was done. And it was so nice. Oh, really? She needed to have a plan of action based on her paragraph. So in chat GPT, I said, based on the previous response, summarize a plan of action to correct the problem. It was two pages. Wow. It was unbelievable. Wow. And it all happened in 20 seconds. Wow. That's awesome. Now, when I sit down to write a description of a property for sale, it might take me 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But by using artificial intelligence for realtors, I can go into ChatGPT or any other tool that I have and say, write a description of this property for sale and extend accentuate the highlights which include the back patio the vaulted ceilings and you go on to describe some things how you tell it to write is the most important part but in a matter of 30 seconds i have the perfect written description of this property for sale okay instead of taking 15 or 20 minutes or as is Sometimes my habit, I blow it off because I, I'm I'm afraid. I, I'm nervous. I don't know. I know it's going to take me forever. And I just, it's one of those things you don't want to do, but you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Now I can have it done in 30 seconds and it's perfect. Well, God bless you, man. And that is just scratching the surface, literally yeah. just scratching the surface. We can make videos with AI. We can write scripts with AI. We can do... Uh, all kinds of things with AI that I haven't even scratched the surface. And the, the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Association is founded right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Really? In July, they're having a three-day seminar for marketers on how to use AI for marketing. And, and I'll be attending that home. seminar. You, and I'm you sorry? Can, you can still sleep in your own bed. Yeah. Well, no, I'll be I'll be going downtown. I want to be there live. Oh, I got you. I just finished up three days ago. I finished up an artificial intelligence for realtors sponsored by the the building where I have my office. And it was attended by about 60 or 70 realtors. And it was unbelievable the information we got wow. and the things that we can do with artificial intelligence to help promote the real estate industry. So it's going to it's going to affect auctioneers just as much as it does realtors and for me i need to be involved in that state-of-the-art information it's one of the things i'm passionate about i love how it will help my clients get better results okay that's great i, I need to focus a little more on that as well uh if i can make the time you know what i mean um i'm going to go back to something here uh uh that you, uh, I know you've got a passion about, and so can you discuss uh, uh, with our with our listeners uh, about um, Toastmasters and how that fit in with your training, or possibly fit in with your training to become an auctioneer? Sure, uh, I'll go back to the the comment I made earlier about having a radio face. When I was a young man, my father was involved in Toastmasters and. He took me to several Toastmasters meetings. And when I came back from the Air Force, I got involved in a local Toastmasters group. Uh, after I went to college and became. John, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, I want to catch something there for our audience. And I want to thank you for your service. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I, I went on to, to Bowling Green State University, where I was the president of the marketing club for two years and was a leader in that organization. I was on the Dean's Advisory Council my senior year, and I went on to a successful career in sales after that. But I, I got involved with Toastmasters again 
when I moved back to Ohio. And this particular conversation we're having is what we in Toastmasters would call an impromptu session. There's no scripting. There's no, I'm not reading from anything. And in the Toastmasters world, they do have an impromptu speaking category. And I went as high as you can go in the competition there and took first place at the divisional level in the impromptu speaking here in Cleveland. And again, that has, it's always been my ability to speak and my ability to communicate clearly and to be succinct and accurate in the words that I use that has allowed me to have the presence that I have to build trust with people when they know that what I'm saying is genuine and it's coming across in a clear and concise way. And so that is where Toastmasters has really helped me shine. And I always enjoyed it. And for anyone who's gonna be involved in working with people, I truly encourage you to get involved in a local Toastmasters group. I can't tell you how many times I shake my head at the way some of these politicians and public speakers um and ah and stammer and stutter and it's horrible and toastmasters is phenomenal at correcting those bad habits and turning you into one of the top one percent of all speakers in the nation that's awesome john that's awesome um here, here's one that uh will be kind of off the wall question for you um what's one mistake or a mistake uh that many people uh, that you work with uh, make that's hard to undo when selling real estate, a uh, business, or any other asset? Hmm. Probably the number one mistake a, a person would make is hiring the wrong auctioneer. Okay. That's, it's just that simple. Not doing your homework, not finding a qualified auctioneer for the asset that you have. If I'm selling real estate, I don't want someone I I know out in Menor, there's an auction company that does a phenomenal job selling toys. Mm -hmm. And they have almost a monthly toy auction. And they do an absolute phenomenal job. It's like watching an antique roadshow the way they describe these toys. Mm -hmm. I would be a horrible auctioneer for toys. Just <laughs> flat out. I don't know anything about them. Yeah. But you love um, real estate. Yeah. Yeah, if if someone were to hire me to sell grandma's antiques, I'm not that guy. Okay. People people need to find an auctioneer whose niche matches the assets that they have to sell. That's excellent. That's excellent. And good great advice. Great advice. Um we're we're about to finish up here. Just got a couple more questions for you, John, if you don't mind. Um sure. how, do you, how do you define success success for me is exceeding my clients expectations and receiving a referral from them for the job and the effort that i put forth plain and simple well, i want them to think wow we expect this and john really went the extra mile and gave us all this too and when they respond back to me with a referral, with a note, with a thank you card or an, an email or a text message saying, wow, we, we love the job you did. And we are so thrilled with the results of the auction. We just want you to know that from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you. To me, that's what success is all about. John, I couldn't uh, have thought of a better answer myself if I were trying to. That's, a, that's an excellent answer. I appreciate that. Um, John, um, I mean, you haven't been in, in, in the uh, auction business all your life. It's been, what, a decade or so, decade two, something like that? For a decade, yep. So, but you've had good success in that decade. And so my question would be, with all of your success, what is your biggest challenge? Well, I just let me clarify. I've been in the auction business for... 13 years now and it's been seven of the best years of my life <laughs> like anything it yeah. has its ups and downs okay and uh i i apologize could you repeat the question yeah yeah with all of your sex success um what is your biggest challenge 
My biggest challenge is finding the time to go out and meet new potential auction clients, to meet with commercial brokers, to meet with realtors, to attend functions and network with people who are potential buyers. I'm a member of the Greater Cleveland Real Estate Investment Association. They meet monthly. I need, I need to find time to go there. And oh, by the way, I have a wife and she likes to see me now and then you yeah. know, when she's in the mood. So yeah, I, I do everything I can. Time management is my biggest challenge. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, well, is there anything else that you would like to mention or talk about that I haven't brought up? I appreciate you asking that question. You know, people want to know, well, what have you done that makes your auction company so special? And when I'm sitting with prospective auction clients, one of the things I tell them, I said, look, I've sold $40,000 crack houses downtown Cleveland. I sold a $650,000 old Holiday Inn that was being shut down by the city, turned around a year and a half later and sold that same building for $14 million. Then in 2017, one of the best auctions I've had, I, I, I tell a quick story, I'm driving down US 250 south of Sandusky in Norwalk, and I, I see a woman mowing the lawn on a riding mower. And a big sheet of plywood sign in the yard said, for sale by owner. I pulled in, I walked over, she shut down the mower, I introduced myself with a business card, and I said, I'm interested in talking to you and your husband about selling your property at an auction. And she said, well, John, I don't think my husband wants to sell the property at auction, but he has some cars, <laughs> some cars. So I got to meet Mr. Ron Hackenberger and Ron has become one of my favorite people of all time. He is a hardworking, life loving Christian father of six daughters and a wife. And he is just a lovable man and I, I love him dearly. He is just so wonderful. We got to talking, I got to know Ron and his wife Eunice and long story short, two years later, he hired me to sell his 750 car collection wow. at auction in Norwalk, Ohio. Wow, uh, that's, that's- We did a two day auction. Yeah, we did a two day auction. We put up a 20, it was a 220 foot tent, 85 feet deep, three big TV screens in the front of the tent, 2,500 chairs. Every newspaper in the region picked it up. It was social media blasted everywhere. We did $2.4 million in sales in two days. Wow. You know, it's and, kind of unusual for somebody, for a collector like that, it's very rare to see them just to sell the whole collection. You know. Well, he was 82 at the time, and, and he knew that if he didn't do it now and take care of it himself, that he, it would be a burden to his wife and his daughters. And, and it ended up being a burden to them because only about half or less than the cars had titles to them. So we had to have titles done, and his daughters and his wife were the main drivers behind that, and they did an absolutely outstanding job in getting all those titles prepared. He still, believe it or not, Ron still has about 90 to 100 cars in his barns. Really? Okay. So we didn't get this of day. Okay. Yeah. I Well, trust me, we've been talking. <laughs> and, and it looks like if nothing happens Maybe, before yeah. next year, we're probably going to do another auction next year. But that was the thing that, that I love most about that auction, besides the family. I told Ron when we sat down to negotiate a contract, I said, Ron, I'm not just going to have an auction. This is so special that I want to develop a, a, an event. Thursday night at the Norwalk racetrack, we had 50 plus attendees, family, friends, local contributors, uh, people in the community that knew him. They all came together for a picnic in the evening were to kick off this auction event on Thursday night. We all got up and told stories about Ron and Eunice, had a blast. Friday morning, we had 400 cars lined up in rows out at the racetrack, and we had an open house for the whole day. So Ron got to spend the whole day 
talking to new friends and old friends alike about his cars. And this guy remembered everything. He probably had fun. He, he could tell stories about every single car. Yeah. We did social media videos of Ron and I. And I and I took my phone. It was like, okay, guys, welcome to the Ron and John show. Ron, what kind of car are we looking at today? And I turned the phone around and Ron would describe one of his old Studebakers that we had for sale. And we do five or six of those in a row each day for a week. And then I had videos for two months. Right. Then on Saturday, we had the first day of the auction. We sold 400 cars under the tent from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Then we went to a secondary location on Sunday and sold 350 more cars. Kind of like the birthday that never ends. This was a five-day event. <laughs> and, and he was splattered all over the front page of all the local newspapers. It turned into more than just an auction. Mm -hmm. I, I say that and I tell that story for one reason alone. I'm not just in it to make the money and the money is good, but I'm not just in it to make the money. I want to look at every situation, every unique circumstance and try and build the best possible outcome for my clients. And that's not always just a financial outcome. The memories that Ron and Eunice made leading up to the day of the auction and at that night on thursday night in the in the press box overlooking the starting line all those memories for his daughters and his in-laws and his friends those are memories that no one can ever take away right and sure could he have had somebody come in and just auction them all off and be done in a day or two probably so mm -hmm. but he wouldn't have had all those memories he wouldn't have had that event and and that's i think what separates jf marketing from the crowd is that we look at each and every situation differently, uniquely. How can we make this better? Mm -hmm. Okay. That, John, that's awesome. That's good stuff, man. Um, and I want to close out uh, our, our uh, podcast today just by uh, asking you, and I'm going to help you out here with this one, uh, but how can our audience um, learn, learn more about you and get a hold of you? And I'm going to share with them uh, this uh you were featured uh, recently in uh, Business Professional Magazine. They did a beautiful eight-page spread on, uh, on you, and this is this is phenomenal. And I know uh, from experience that it's available on the homepage of your website because that's where I got it. Okay, um, so uh, could you tell people how they could uh, uh, find you, how they get to your site, how do they get this, and how do they reach you? Sure. There's three simple ways to find me. The first is, is I have two different websites, but my main auction website is jfmarketing.us. And I'm sure you'll help promote that in the video. You mm -hmm. can also email me and I, I make it as simple as possible. John, J-O-H-N at auctionjohn.com. Excellent. And then the third way to get a hold of me, certainly call me on my phone. I have my private cell phone that's available most of the time. I shut it off after 10 o'clock, so I don't get woke up in the middle of the night. I get you. Uh, but they can call me on my cell phone, and we'll publish that either during the presentation or on the website. Okay. John, this is great stuff. I appreciate you so much for coming on today. We were about out of time. Um and uh, but uh, I want to thank you again for being here, um, ladies, and ladies and gentlemen who are, are watching. Uh, stay tuned next week uh, for our next episode. And John, kudos to you, man. Take care. This has been the Better Business, Better Life, building on your success podcast. If you have questions about creating tax free wealth and income, forward looking tax mitigation, strategic risk mitigation, wealth preservation and legacy planning, and advanced financial management, go to DuponAdvisory.com or email Terry at DuponAdvisory.com. 49 faces looked to him in triumph. Over the last 12 months, they had each taken turns and promoted his business for a week at a time, driving over $987,342 in revenue. What if you had a network of 50 centers of influence who promoted your business every week for a year? Grab your copy of the number one Amazon best-selling book, The Ultimate Guide to Growing Your Business with a Podcast, at 33% off the Amazon price by going to ultimatepodcastbook.com. Again, that website for 33% off the Amazon price is ultimatepodcastbook.com.